Hi lovelies and welcome back to this channel. If you're new here, my name is Belinda Strana. Thank you so much for all the love and support. Don't forget to please subscribe to this channel, turn on notifications so that anytime I upload a video, you will be the first person to be notified that we are returning subscribers to those who that share my videos, leave commentaries and also educate each and every one of us. You guys are the real MVP. All right, lovelies, let's dive in into this video. Hello, lovelies, as we all know that the James and Fohad controversy have actually taken all of the social medias, you know, reacting to their commentaries regarding black women. And in today's video, I was just able to put up, you know, some stitches from black men, like reacting to it. You know, the way we do it, I like to see or hear what they have to say about all of this controversy. I'm just going to roll the clip as well as some of other stitches I was able to put together. Please leave me your own thoughts and let's dive into it. You men on social media don't seem to get it. So let me put it in perspective for you. Yeah? Offend black women online, hand over your career card today. If you want to get cancelled to the fullest effect, go and offend black women online. It's like you man don't learn and you man don't listen. Don't you know that black women run this social media thing? Say something to offend them. A tweet 20 years ago, something on your mom's Facebook. They don't care, they will find it, they will drag you. They'll make think pieces, memes, they will insult you in ways that are so creative and end your whole career in the limelight, bro. Big man thing, they are off come of this social media thing. They run this. So please be polite online. Because if they catch you and find you, hmm. I used to watch, you know, James and Fahad's content and I never expected them to trend, you know, how they're currently trending for pretty much a very interesting reason. If you've not seen it, it's a segment of them having other two men in their podcast where obviously they created a safe space where these two other men who happen to not be black um, were speaking down and perpetuating stereotypes towards black women, saying that they're aggressive, they're temperamented, they might slap you, and so many things that again is associated, you know, with again a stereotypes that you would think that a podcast that has two you know men of color would actually use that situation to correct these two men that was making these claims but no they participated and enabled and continued this conversation and allowing those two men to get away with what they said because again they never cared which i'm so confused because these are the same men that will say that they love black women they respect black women but then we'll allow other people to speak down towards black women and not say anything about it. It's just very disappointing, but I'm not surprised. Remember when I said the reason why I was struggling to give James and Fu had the benefit of the doubt was because twice in the last two years, I've been invited to a panel discussion and taken major issue with that discussion. On the one that was taped, I withdrew my consent to it being published. And now Andrew Schultz has come out and confirmed. They had shit that they asked to take out the episode. You know what they didn't ask to take out? Their producer or whatever was like, hey, we really think that's inappropriate. We'd like to take that out. That's very uncomfortable. Their fight and flight instinct really kicked in after the power down. But with that joke about the black women, nothing. So the fact that I'm still here begging James and Fuhad to learn the lessons about why it's important to stand up against misogynoir and do better isn't because I have huge amounts of empathy for these guys and their careers, because after the way they've acted, I don't really like them. It's for two reasons. One, and this is a small one, it's because the idea that Andrew Schultz erased racist white guy is able to destroy the careers of two prominent black people by being racist really doesn't sit right with me. Two, and this is the main one, while I completely agree with Francesca Ramsey, the person behind I never thought the leopards would eat my face, when she says that if you're not a black woman, it's not your job or right to accept their apology on the behalf of black women, it is our job as men to try and get other men to behave better on issues of sexism. And if James and Fuhad are cancelled among progressive circles, that only makes it more likely they'll go down the tape pipeline. And now that we know that James and Fuhad essentially gave the green light to that podcast going out as as is, how do we as black people in those toxic spaces avoid situations like this? And I think Marvin Harrison nailed this. Whenever there is a podcast from what we would call the culture from the black community uh, representing black people or has black people as the faces of it, the second that they become scalable and become huge, they are surrounded by whiteness, like surrounded. Immediately, the people who own their agencies, management companies, people are probably editing it, probably managing their social media. And because they're not surrounded by people who understand those things, uh, it ultimately means that like, 
clips like this can come out, conversations like that can happen without being interrupted. Um, because there's things that they could have done in the moment of it happening, uh, even if they didn't want to challenge it right there and then when it happened live, but they could have had someone in their team go back and be like, make sure that doesn't come out because it's not okay and it's not appropriate. Then in this moment, they would have been able to say, actually, we challenged it afterwards um, and we asked them not to put it out and they did. And then it actually removed some of that accountability. That's a thing that could have done. And this is why I think it's incredibly important that like employing amazing black women, having diverse teams means that these types of things just don't happen. If they do happen, somebody catches it and someone speaks loud enough to make sure it doesn't come out. So as I said before, I think these guys are politically clueless. They don't understand the impact of the issues they discuss, and so they don't understand how harmful some of the stuff they say can be. But if they had people around them that did understand that, I think they'd do better. Andrew Schultz is catching heat because he disrespected black woman on his podcast talking about that the reason why dudes get a bus cut when they get with a black woman is because they start losing their hair because they can't stop complaining, man. And the reason they grow out their beard is for when they smack them, pretty much saying that black women are abusive. They'll put hands on you and they'll just nag you to death. Well, let's talk about them white women, Andrew, because we don't all see them. We seen them for her shitting on the fucking bed. Guarantee you no black woman chain on no motherfuckers bad, bro. Right? We seen the white girl chase the dude from Creed, man. Michael B. Jordan's opponent. Don't know his name. The one whose girl got picked up by the other actor that I don't know his name. Off the top of my head. Fuck, man. How am I forgetting these dudes' names, man? Whatever. The point is, man. We don't see how them white girls get down, bro. They'll chase you. They'll shit on your bed. They'll gaslight the fuck out of you in front of fucking court, man, where you got proof and everything. So let's not talk about crazy, Andrew. It's not to, don't lie on your name, don't get you locked up. Let's not talk about crazy, bro. So podcasters James and Fuad are under flack right now because they went to Atlanta to be on the Poor Moms podcast and all of a sudden when they were in there, they didn't see no baddies. They said they hadn't seen none the whole time, but they were there. James said he didn't see any. And everybody from Atlanta, black women in general, are in an uproar. And I feel like this lesson keeps coming up and we keep feeling it. So I'm going to spell it out so we get it. As a man, you voicing your opinion on what you like and don't like, what you deem bad and what you don't deem bad, is not a right that women think that you should have. And from a man's point of view, it's just not a smart decision unless you just don't care about backlash. Like, if you cool with hearing a bunch of stuff back, by all means, go off. This is doubly so when you have a level of fame and a lot of dudes are the types of people who listen to your content or watch your content, right? Like... To them, to women, you have a, a, a moral responsibility to claim that everybody's beautiful and kind of push along their beauty standards, which to a degree I understand because you don't want nobody to feel ostracized. But at the same time, as a man, you should really just keep your preferences to yourself according to how the internet views it. Now, from my standpoint, I say don't say anything, just move. Meaning like, if you like a certain type of chick, you don't have to date that type of chick you don't like. Just date the chicks you like. Have the chicks you like around you. Dwell with the girl that you like, whatever it is. That way, all they can do is make speculations like, oh, he don't like this type of chick. All right, cool, but he never came out and said that, so all it is is you assuming or you trying to put evidence together and coming up with a case, and that's a lot of work that a lot of people don't really feel like doing or care enough about. Prime example, that whole Chris Brown fiasco where he kicked all the dark-skinned girls out of his circle when he was at the club and had only light-skinned girls in there literally implied what kind of woman he likes, but he never came out and said he only liked light-skinned. All his baby mamas are light-skinned, but he ain't never come out and said he only liked light-skinned girls, and guess what? Guess who's spending $1,100 to take pictures with him? women stop telling all your feelings on these podcast mics and then being upset when it comes back to hunt you and as a man in general give good pr political answers to these crazy questions and just move according to how you really feel it's that simple bro i bet there are baddies in atlanta there are they just ain't checking for them like you lot really thought they like black girl. all right this is the thing i'll say to black women when it comes to guys yeah when it comes to guys you people idolize if it really matters to you that they like black women then you should make sure of that before you give them all your adulation and your praise and put them and put them on the pedestal then when they get on that pedestal they don't really give a fuck about the people that put them on that pedestal you understand let me tell you something right now when it comes to guys and preferences there isn't a friendship group where the guys in that friendship group like different kinds of women i.e white women and black women and asian women or whatever it doesn't happen a bunch of guys are going to come in the comments and say no it's not true my friendship group really bullshit bullshit let me tell you right now that you see when it comes to men there's a difference between what they say and what they actually do no friendship group likes two different kinds of women so if one of them looks like he likes white girls i can bet my pinky toe the other one likes white girls too 
you understand? <laughs> there definitely are baddies in Atlanta, bro. There are. They just stay checking for them. <laughs> Guys, I really believe that apologizing is probably the worst thing James and Ford could have done. If you guys don't know what happened, James and Ford from the podcast Shits and Gigs basically came under fire and they were getting a lot of pushback for a clip that surfaced of them laughing at a joke that Andrew Schultz, a comedian by the way, made about black women. Basically, the joke was along the lines of basically when a black woman is dating a white guy he starts getting like a different um he starts changing the way he looks but essentially because um these laws said always oh, because basically when you start hanging around them um when you start hanging around a certain partner of a certain race you start picking up their characteristics or whatever which is you know nothing wrong with that but then andrew Schultz was like no 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 yo when you start hanging it's called them are getting that kind of handshake to protect themselves from being a from, from being beaten up by black women right a very out of pocket joke, a very mad joke, but Andrew Schultz is known for this kind of stuff. You know what I'm saying? He doesn't just target black women or a certain demographic, he does it for every single race. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like, first of all, you guys' anger is misdirected. These lot didn't make the joke. It was Andrew Schultz who made the joke. Andrew Andrew Schultz is the one who you lot should be putting under fire, right? Because he's the one that made the joke. Now I understand these lot laughed. They shouldn't have laughed. They should. They were completely in the wrong. But the reason why I'm saying apologizing is the worst thing they've done. I've seen this comment numerous times. Oh, they're only apologizing because they got caught. They they don't, they don't really mean it, right? Oh, nah. I haven't got any sympathy for them anymore because they were cackling and they were gargling all this stuff, right? Now you've 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 made it worse for yourself by not standing behind what you did. You know what I'm saying? Now it's like worse for you. You know what I'm saying? Instead of like, if they didn't even address you or anything. It would have gone away eventually because it, I really believe the person who's really responsible for this is Andrew Schultz, not these lot. You get what I'm saying? Not these lot. And and now what people are doing, they're finding all the clips of these lot saying some 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 borderline questionable things. You know what I'm saying about black women, right? And now when I like now when I like, oh nah, these are finished. I can't even watch them anymore. They've lost me. X, Y, and Z. You know what I'm saying? So. What do you guys think they should have done? Do you think apologizing was the right move? Because personally, I don't. Because I also believe they've lost the trust of men. Because men are now like, yo, so you man are just going to apologize when you ain't even fully in the wrong. It's not making any sense. Like, but what do you lot think? Anyway? Like, seriously, lovely, it's, it's so, so disappointing that the people that you think that they are your own, as in your own type of people, the people that you support with everything in you, like the people that you push to own, like, you know, turns out to be a disappointment. So these two British, you know, black guys decided to go to, you know, to have their uh, podcasts and all of that. Knowing fully well that this man, this podcast of a guy, that wants to be a pan colored man, is often known for his kind of you know questions and how he often want to embarrass people like his questions are tricky he will make sure that you know you are just done <laughs> like i see this as a setup like i think it's a setup because and the setup that you will fell for it like people have there are so many opinions oh my god black men these black men you know they, that and all let's just sometimes let's talk about the individual thing i will not just put the fact that there are a lot of black men that supports black women like there are a lot of them that support black women there are a lot of them that you can actually joke with your queens but even with that, we still have some group of passport bros who thinks that maybe because they have heard or they have experience or maybe because of the anti-blackness they have in them, they do not want to have anything to do with someone that looks like them. And this gives them the, you know, the room to actually maybe look for relationship outside there. There is this passport bro scenario that a lot of, you know, passport bros have to leave their comfort zone traveling across the globe to meet up with a woman. Like a woman, you will probably get closer to you, but all because you feel that there is a certain woman that 
you cannot be in control of or, be, or maybe a woman that knows her worth her rights that want to stand on her feet but you feel that this is not the kind of person you want you want someone you can do like you know how it is they would decide i am not disputing the fact that you cannot make love elsewhere but there are specific people that are known for this kind of you know situation they'll leave your comfort zone travel all over the globe to become a passport bros but they will actually end up being with a woman that they cannot be with in their said you know neighborhood or environment this is just the irony of everything so these people decided these guys decided to actually you know disgrace themselves in the podcast you know claiming and talking up like try to degrade black women and this got people reacting like this is just something that black women have been talking all over you know for a very long time talking about how they don't even get support from their own brother like from their own black men they don't get a push-up from them how do you think that other people will respect and push them or if their own can actually you know the like put them down to the lowest of the low what do you expect other people to do this is why many people that is not of you know comes on their on a platform start to you know characterize black women thinking that they know black men better or because of things like this or because of what a black man have said or is this church that a black man have actually put a black woman to look like this is why there is something like a german woman having an opinion on a black woman this is why there is something there's something like like this mexican woman having an opinion on a black it's because of things like this it's because people like this have given them the room to actually you know you know do whatever they feel that is right to black women or talk down on black women because their own men is actually talking down on them what do you expect other people to do like seriously when i saw this oh, you know all over this at, at first i never wanted to like give my own commentaries like i said before i am just for you know coming together pushing out black history and all about when i see things like it it makes me feel some type of a disappointment because we are supposed to be together collectively and uh, you know working towards achieving a common goal freedom and all of that but when a particular you know black dude have seen that maybe has gotten some kind of fame and all of that which was contributed by a black woman <laughs> that is uh, like they will begin to like feel some type of way try to look for a way to bring like there are ways you can actually divert from such questions you can like you can just cut it short and okay we don't want to go you know there this is our women you're talking about like seriously i like men that uplift their own and this is a zero thing i have seen from this controversy they like i tried my best to actually look into their videos yeah and when i see you know their fans comment section it is all filled with black women supporting them seriously the people that you guys are attracted to let me just assume that they are attracted to pan colored women they are not even giving you the support at which these black women are giving to you seriously and like the first guy i stitched his video he was like if you are coming for a black woman like be ready to lose it all <laughs> and this is why there have been an apology videos all recirculating which i'm going to put up like they did they, like all of this thing does not really make sense they didn't try black women already know that there are some black men who does not really want to roll with them and they are so cool with that that is why sometimes i even encourage black women to keep their options open like if you see someone that treats you better go for this person seriously because i know that a lot of black women that also do not like they don't find other people i tried but is it like you to just keep on waiting for a black man that will appreciate you later that will you know but you just keep on you know fighting looking for love from a black woman like it's just better you keep your options open like seriously 
anyway lovelies when i saw the controversy i was like you know how we do it here i'm just gonna put up to see you know from the perspective of black men if they are in support or if they are not <laughs> anyway lovelies wanna just leave me your own thoughts in the comment section of what you think of this video and please do not forget that we do not support any form of bullying and harassment we're just here for educational and informative purposes and if you're not subscribed please do again hit over to click on the subscription button and i will see you when i upload the next one watch up to this extent thank you so much for all the love and support why not just leave me your own thoughts in the comment section of what you think of this video and please don't forget that we do not support any form of bullying and harassment. I will see you this when I upload the next one.